Adam, you play the villain, Kylo Ren. How did you feel about taking on the role of the villain? Well, I didn't think of him as a villain. I, I guess when we were working on it, I tried to, through JJ, kind of hearing what he had to say about him, uh, tried to hopefully make him as human as possible. And so that's where I started, uh, I guess, where we started as opposed to an end result. We tried to think of how, how that person began. Kylo Ren is a complex and conflict conflicted villain who wears a mask. How did you approach showing all of these dimensions without the aid of facial emotions? Well, some of it, I guess, is not really up to me, and some of it was. I feel, you know, it's so collaborative that I can, you, know, you can only do so much and just trust everyone that, that, um, that the story is coming across, that you don't, um, maybe you don't fight the costume, I guess. There's so many uh, trusting that the, the power of thought is, is um, I, is a powerful force to, uh, to use uh, vernacular from the movie. The, the costume is powerful, but also, also like just getting it on is a lot of information. And then why, why does that person feel the need to cover themselves or be concealed is also a lot of information. You know, and then trusting the power of thought. I guess that that all that that story is still coming across, even though you can't be seen. Right. What was it like working with JJ on fleshing out the character? Very exciting. He, he's. Mm -hmm. um, couldn't be a more calm, you know, thoughtful collaborator who, I mean, that sounds like a line, but it's, it's true. I've been in like, uh, his ability to kind of compartmentalize and, and give everyone their, you know, due attention and, and with the, still keeping a third eye on, on the bigger picture is pretty incredible to witness. Yeah. Were you impressed by the scale of the film and the practical sets and how did that sense of reality and authenticity help you as an actor? Well, just speaking of JJ, he just he understood that innately that, that uh, putting people in front of you know blue walls wasn't it wouldn't be as exciting as putting people in front of like you know tactile objects and how that also gave him room to, for improv, which was really I think necessary in something like this. And I feel like you get that in the original trilogy that even though it's um, they they were working within constraints, you know, either either financial or you know just technology, and I think uh, it allowed them for a lot of improv, and he set himself up for that, and with having, uh, you know, probably more resources, but still giving himself uh, constraints, which is which is good. What kind of training did you have to do for this part? Uh, a lot of fight training, a lot of uh, which was which was fine. I mean, these people are at, at war, so it's they they are very physical anyway, you know, and that that kind of all informs everyone's character, I'd say. What can audiences look forward to when Star Wars: The Force Awakens hits the big screen? I don't know. I feel like that's a question for them to answer. What I feel like everyone, the strength of these movies that they create so many worlds and there's, there's so much detail in them that people kind of. I hesitate to say what people are gonna feel when they go in and watch the movie, but um, I think that they'll uh, hopefully find uh, themselves immersed, immersed in a world that they can take ownership of. Great. If you had to describe your experience making this film in one word, what would that word be and why? Surreal, self-explanatory. Yes. <laughs>